Hello and welcome to Spinny Hollow. It is a joy and a pleasure to sort of see you. I know you can see me, but I'm pretending that I can see you. And I just want to welcome you to Spinny Hollow Woodland. Now, some of you may know me, Kate, delighted to make your acquaintance if you don't know me. And hello again if you do. Will know me from Camp Festival. We curate the Spinny Hollow area, which is a whole host of rural crafts artists and craftspeople where we do everything from forgery to bushcraft to whittling and green woodwork as well as some theatrical and musical happenings around the campfire and we thought what might be rather lovely is to invite you to Spinny Hollow Woodland the HQ as it were and to come and sit around our campfire and hear some of our tales and our songs for the evening. Now it is worth mentioning that Spinny Hollow we are Jeff and I um, are in quite a unique position and when all of this started happening this you know what this is <laughs> when this started happening uh, we invited some of our core team to come and lock down with us so we continue so we can continue to work in the woods and to crack on with some projects that now is the time that we can do so please follow me
My name is Edward and I'd like to tell you the story of the Paddo. <clears throat> so, the Paddo is a creature from old English myth, old English storytelling, and it's awfully old. And nobody has ever really seen the Paddo. So there's not many people who can say what the Paddo looks like. Some people say the Paddo looks like a ugly little boy like a little boy that's half frog, half newt with rubbery wet fingers and rubbery wet toes and big slippery wet lips. But those who have heard the paddo know. You can tell when the paddo is nearby because of the noise the paddo makes, which is a kind of a loop, 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 looping sound. So our story begins one day when a young maiden was going to the well to fetch a pail of water for her and her dear old mother. So, <clears throat> listen then friends and I'll tell you again a strange old tale so you'll see of a foul paddo which upon a maiden fell as she came to get water down from the well. A strange old tale so you'll see my friends a strange old tale, so you'll see. So, with a pail she came. To fetch water she tried, but the pail was to fail, for the well it was dry. Oh, why, oh, why is the well dry? Where is all the water? Dramatically she cried. And then, her ears heard a scuffling sound. And a foul smell came creeping round as the paddo came loop, bloop, blooping out the ground. Oh, why do you weep, my hinny, my sweet? Oh, I cannot fetch the water, said she. Well, I'll fetch you water, my hinny, my sweet, if you will marry me. Oh, oh, well, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, go on then. Yeah, I will. Foolish young maid said yes straight away. Such was her need for a drink. But the paddo dived down into the well and he proved true. The well soon overflew. But when he came back up, the maid, she was gone in a blink, ran back to her mother with a drink. And she forgot all about the foul paddo until later that night as they lay in bed a raucous noise came rattling a clamour came clattering a big bang bump battering down in the street and the paddo sang his song so sweet oh open the door my hinny my heart open the door my darling for i am the fellow to whom you were wed down in the meadow by the dry well bed says the mother to the daughter who's that down at the door the daughter says pshaw it's a foul paddo rolling round on the floor well let him in cried the mother it's bad manners that i abhor we can't have a foul paddo rolling round on the floor so the paddo came loop bloop blooping in, sat down by the fire and began to sing. Ow, fetch me some supper, my hinny, my heart. Fetch me some supper, my darling. For I am the fellow to whom you were wed, down in the meadow by the dry well bed. Pshaw, said the daughter, am I to fetch a foul paddo his supper? Oh, you'll do it right now, said mother, for good manners are pro proper. So the paddo had his supper, and he felt a little better, but he soon began to stutter, and he warbled, and he wailed. Oh, send me to bed, my hinny, my heart. Send me to bed, my darling, for I... I'm the fellow to whom you were wed 
down in the meadow by the dry well bed. Pshaw, says the daughter, am I to send a foul paddo to bed? You'll do it right now, said mother. Let him lay down his head. So the paddo lay down, made a funny little sound, then with breath fierce and foul, teeth black and brown, he said, Cuddle my back, my hinny, my heart. Cuddle my back, my darling. For I am the fellow to whom you were wed, down in the meadow by the dry well bed. Pshaw, says the daughter, now I cannot do that. Give a foul, ugly paddo a cuddle round his smelly, fat back. Oh, you'll do it right now, said mother. It's manners that you lack. Give him a little cuddle round his poor old back. So the maid, down she lay, and then his voice came again. He said, give me a kiss, my hinny my heart. Give me a kiss, my darling, for I am the fellow to whom you were wed, down in the meadow by the dry well bed. Pshaw, says the daughter, now I, I cannot do this. Give a foul, ugly paddo, my pretty little kiss. Oh, a kiss! This, this is just a politeness. You can never go amiss with a pretty little kiss. So a kiss she gave, and then his voice came again. He said, now fetch me an axe, my hinny, my heart. Fetch me an axe, my darling. So the maid fetched an axe, and when she came back, he said, now cut off my head, my hilly, my heart, cut off my head, my darling, for I am the fellow to whom you were wed, down in the meadow by the dry well bed. So, quick as a flash, the maid let fall the axe and the paddo fell down to the floor. Then he arose, safe and sound, up from the ground, as the prettiest prince you ever had saw. And of course, needless to say, they were married straight away and were happy as two people can be. But, take care, my friends, what promises you tell when you're down by the well. For the paddo is loop, bloop, blooping for thee. Down by the well, dears. So you see. Harriet Riddle. She's uh, our stitch artist. I am. You are, aren't you? Can you tell us a bit more about what you're doing? So, as these guys are performing around the fire, I have got, um, I've hired in some child, child labour. <laughs> Cheap. And uh, she's pedalling away from me and powering the sewing machine and I am stitching these guys playing music. Um, so I like to lift little things I hear people say and I've got to work really quickly because everybody performs very quickly so it's um it's like live performance stitching. <laughs> nice, sorry I got a bit distracted by a child in a onesie. <laughs> um, <laughs> live performance stitching, amazing. And mm -hmm. how have you been how have you been doing since the crazy lockdown? has hit us. Uh, it's been nuts, um, but uh, lucky enough to, to be out here, mm. um, to be isolating out here. I have a solar panel, so I don't always need a peddler. 
and I've been doing uh, portraits on my porch. Portraits? Porch traits. <laughs> uh, and today I did a portrait of a family in India and I was doing portraits in Germany and it's amazing that we're all in the same boat all around the world and uh, it's really interesting to check in, see how people are doing and stitch them live um, over wonderful technology. So, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uniting the world via the medium of stitch. Exactly, making the most of it all. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Lovely, thanks Harriet. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Two-thirds of Polly gone wrong. Unfortunately, Polly is not here with us, but we're going to do our little version of um, Alt J's uh, song interlude, Bright and Blue. Bright and Blue. She, 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 she only ever, 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 ever walks to two count, count her step. Eighteen teen strides and she stops to abide by the law that she herself has set. That eighteen steps is one complete set and before the next nine right and nine left. She looks up up at the blue and whispers to all of the above, don't let me drown. Don't breathe alone, no kicks, no pangs, no broken bones. Never let me sink, always feel at home. No sticks, no shanks, and no stones. And never leave it too late, always enjoy the taste of the great, 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 great world of hearts. As all dogs everywhere bark, 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 it's worth knowing. Like all good fruit, the balance of life is in the right and ruin. This is Hedgerow. This is one of Polygon Wrong. Yes, bringing to you live from Spinny Hollow. Mm. My head, it does tread where my feet go. I follow through thicket and hollow, through Hampshire's Hedgerow. Quietly, steadily, still, slack and deadly. I take what I need, giving only what I owe. Oh, yeah, I did at that door. Yeah, I did at that door. Yeah, I did at that door. The door that did at that door. Yeah, I did at that door. Yeah, I did at that door. Yeah, I did at that door. A bright eyed and dazzling Cornish and maddening Like a light bulb of time Be regal of my line Barefoot and open toed We climb down the open road And ear to the ground Talk up every single sound Oh, yeah, dee da da do Yeah, dee da da do Da 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 da
I would like to tell you a story. Now this story is called The Storm and it was written by one of our Spinny Hollow fam, uh, Stephen Catling. And I'd like to tell it to you tonight. Now, it's called The Storm and you may know what a storm is. Hopefully you've not been caught out in one too horrifically, but some of you may have watched them from your bedroom windows or you may have been caught out unexpectedly. And so we all know the noise of a storm. It's something a little bit like this. Or a bit of lightning might be. And I want you to help me in this story at any given time from your front rooms or your bedrooms to add to the ambiance and the atmosphere with your storm sounds, okay? So let's hear all the kids do it now. Come on, do it now. Yes, and now the parents, come on. Come on, parents, carers, come on. Yes, definitely new in your pajamas. Let's hear a bit of lightning, yeah? Okay, and um, let's show show them you, Kate, who's filming beautifully. And here's Kate. Come on, give me a bit of lightning. I got you on my give me a bit of thunder. <laughs> give me a bit of um, storm ambiance, windy. It's oh, it's wonderful. So Kate's doing it, and I am doing it. So the storm. Now, once there was a storm in a woodland much like this, but it didn't look like this because the trees were swaying like bilio and this rain was coming down and there was mud everywhere and it was and and it was a scary place to be and in this wood in this storm there was a brave and wonderful stag and this brave and wonderful stag even thought to himself i must not stay out in this storm i need to find shelter i must go and search for shelter for this storm is too outrageous for me. And so he walked on along the wood until not a few feet in front of him, he heard a noise. Help, excuse me, excuse me. He looked down and he saw a most beautiful little dormouse. And the dormouse said, excuse me, um, I, I, please, I fear I may drown. Can I, can, I, can I go with you? And the stag said, yes. Of course, I will take you to shelter. And he bent his beautiful head. And the dormouse scurried up and nestled him into the branches of his lovely Agnes. And there they carried on, the two friends through the hurling, whirling, swirling, burling woods in the storm. And they'd gone not a two meters more when they heard a funny noise. Help! Help! And they looked over and they saw a badger. Through the grey mist there was a badger up to his middle in mud. Every time he reached up he'd sink lower in this quagmire. And the stag, quick as a flash, jumped in there, took him by the scruff of his neck and lifted him up and the badger scurried onto his back. And he said, do not worry badger, I will take us to shelter. And he began to walk again with the two friends on his back. The three of them went not but two metres more when there on the floor they saw a curled up, shivering vixen. Vixen, are you okay? And the vixen said, no, I'm, I'm lost. I've lost my den. Please, may I come with you? Of course, said the stag, climb aboard. One more will not hurt my back. And the four friends ventured on through the stormy woods. And they carried on and it was a long path. And the stag was wondering, where will I find shelter? But he said to the friends on his back, do not fear, you sleep as much as you can. Save your strength and I will take us to safety. And so the friends tried to close their eyes and nestled into his fur and he carried on, on and on and on. Even though exhausted, the stag carried on until he finally saw a mountain, a hill through the and the 
and he thought, if I climb this mountain, perhaps finally I can find safety. I can find shelter. And he took all of his might and all of his strength to climb up and up and up and up. Kept going all the way to the top. It was a long and treacherous journey, but the stag was strong and brave. And when he got finally up there, there he saw a cave. And inside that cave, he saw a glowing light and he walked into it and there was a fire. No one else there, but a fire roaring. He said to his friends, friends, finally, I have found our shelter. So they jumped off his back and started in their exhaustion, doing a merry old dance. But as they were dancing along by the fire, they turned around and saw the stag fallen, buckled knees onto the floor. Whoop still breathing, but eyes growing heavy. He had done so much and he could not go on. The badger thought quickly, well, I know, I'll give you some water. I have some here and gave the stag some water. And then the vixen said, I have some food and put some food into his mouth. And then the dormouse said, oh, but I have got nothing for you, stag. I've got nothing. And the stag opened his eyes and said, just you being here, Dormouse, is enough for me. Just stay close. And the Dormouse thought about this and felt a little bit more contented and began to stroke the stag. Now it was okay for a while, but the stag still grew more tired and more tired and eventually completely closed his eyes. And the fire was turning to embers. And the badger said, we need more firewood. That's what we need. And I will go and get it because I'm a badger and I'm brilliant. And I will go and get the firewood. And the vixen said, well, I'm nimble and super cunning. So I shall go and get food and then we can all eat and drink. And the dormouse said, well, I can come with you. I'm super brave and super courageous. Let me come. I can, I can get whatever you need. No, no, said the badger and the fox. No, you must stay here. You're too vulnerable. You're too small. You'll get lost out there. You stay here, stay here, be brave and look after the stag, stay here. And the dormouse felt bad for not being able to go out, but did as he was told. And the vixen and the badger went off into the night. Now, the fire was going even more to embers and it was cold and the dormouse was a little scared, but kept stroking the stag and thought to himself, I can always hum a song to fill this empty space and began to sing and it reverberated off the cave wall. And the sound filled the space and it made a little bit of joy there in that empty cave. And then the vixen and the badger came back, put the wood on the fire and fed the stag while he was sleeping and gave him some drink. And they all waited until the stag was revived. But still, his breathing was slow and he was still slumped down. What could they do? And then the Dormouse had an idea. The sound he'd made earlier had reverberated off the cave like an echo. And he stood up and went to the entrance of the cave and made an almighty and it ricocheted across. Clap, 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 clap. And the stag began to twitch. And so the vixen and the badger came as well and began to clap, clap, clap. And this crazy cacophony of clapping erupted. And the stag began to open both of his eyes. Uh, looking alert, more alert than it had been the whole time they were in the cave. And then the vixen said, wait, badger, wait, dormouse, stop, listen. And they put their heads out into the stormy night. And you know what they heard? They heard the clapping and the cheering continuing. It was amazing. This sound of the whole forest, of all the animals in the forest joining in, sending their messages of hope and bravery to that very cage to revive the stag. And the stag got on his feet, for it had worked. 
and he came over to the friends who were overjoyed to see him, alert and completely revived. And just then, as they looked out, they saw the storm was passing and a new dawn was beginning. And as they looked into the distance, they saw the arc of a rainbow in the eastern sky. And on behalf of all the people in Spinney Hollow and everybody I know, I would like to thank our very own brave and gallant stag, that is the National Health Service, and all those wonderful badgers and vixens and foxes who are, are key workers going out into the night and helping the stag do his business. And particularly would like to thank those epic and awesome dormice that we all know, those that are staying at home, filling the space with joy where they can and bringing nurture and wonder to the world. Okay, as the night and the light are drawing in, uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us around our fire tonight. Um, and we'd like to end with a little song from Gogol, Gogol Bordello. It's called Start Wearing Purple. And it's a little bit raucous, a little bit wild. So please grab a shaker, grab a saucer, smash your dad on the head, whatever no. you want. Don't, <laughs> Don't do, do that. that. Don't do that. No, no smashing. Um, but join us for this lovely <laughs> radical song. <laughs> Start wearing purple, wearing purple. Start wearing purple. I promise it's just a matter of time. I know we're going to our a twin.
so much for joining us in Spinning Hollywood and thank you for shaking whatever you shook. <laughs> and thank you for listening to our stories and joining us around our campfire. But for now, I just want me to say goodbye from all of us at Spinning Hollow and hopefully we will see you in a field at some point soon. There is a dog attacking my shirt. <laughs> but come back to me, please. <laughs> but at some point soon, really hope to see you in Lulworth uh, for an amazing camp festival. And otherwise, I'll show you out. Come on. <laughs>